Hi lovelies, welcome or welcome back to Anne's Delicious Kitchen, where homemade dishes are made simple. In this video, I will share with y'all some of the diverse recipes I have made in the past. They are easy to make and of course delicious. So grab a seat, relax as I walk you through the steps. Warm welcome to you all. Welcome to Anne's Delicious Kitchen. Thank you all for joining me as I share with y'all how I make Cajun pasta with prawns coated in a creamy seasoned sauce. This recipe is great for dinners. I will start off by adding water in my pot for the macaroni. While the water is boiling, I will go ahead and saute the prawns. To do this, I have already added butter in my pot. Once the butter melts, I will add one shrimp cube, one tablespoon of chili and garlic seasoning and half a tablespoon of salt. These will flavor the prawns and you can use any seasonings of your choice. So yes, this is another way of me seasoning my prawns. So while the prawns are sauteing, I will check on the macaroni water. It's boiling. So, I will add butter, which will help prevent the macaroni from sticking together and will add flavor, okay? As I wait for the butter to melt, let's check on the prawns and as you can see, it's cooked. You will know your prawns are cooked when it curls up. So you want to cook this for about two minutes on medium high heat and then transfer to a plate when they are done cooking. At this point, the butter has melted and I will go ahead and add the macaroni and salt to taste. For this recipe, you can use any noodles of your choice and then you want to boil for about seven minutes on medium heat. It's now time to make the sauce. In the same pot, I will add my aromatics. I just added one chopped red onion half a thumb of grated ginger and five chopped garlic cloves. Saute for about three minutes on medium high heat. After three minutes, add about half a cube of tomato paste or you can use tomatoes from the tin and then you want to saute for about four minutes. Now, when making the sauce, use about half a cup of the pasta water, which will add flavor to the sauce, or you can use broth. The next ingredient is the double cream. I am using this simply because I don't have heavy cream, okay? And then allow it to simmer for about five minutes. In the meantime, I will check on the macaroni. And at this point, it's boiled to my preference. All you need to do is to put the pasta in cold water to hold the cooking process. 
to add creaminess to this recipe, I am going to add one tin of coconut milk and mix till it's well combined. Now, to balance out the flavors of the other ingredients, I have squeezed the juice of half a lemon into the mixture and then you want to mix till it's well combined. Usually for this sauce, Parmesan cheese is used, but since I don't have it, I use cheddar slices. This will help thicken the sauce. At this point, allow it to simmer for about 15 minutes, okay? After 15 minutes, it's time to add the seasoning. So I have half a teaspoon of salt, two shrimp cubes, one spoon of chili and garlic seasoning, half a tablespoon of southern fried seasoning, and one tablespoon of chili powder. And then I will mix till it's well combined. Allow it to simmer for two minutes. Now, let's add the macaroni and mix it with the sauce and allow it to simmer for five minutes. It's now time to add the veggies. So here I have grated carrots, chopped bell pepper, and scallions. Then I will mix till it's well combined. You can use any veggies of your choice, okay? Or completely omit using it. Let's return the cooked prawns to the pot and mix everything together. Just look at how gorgeous this recipe looks. The last seasoning I have is Cajun seasoning. I will sprinkle a bit of it over my creamy pasta and stir well. And then you want to cook this for another minute. Food is ready and it's time to plate. I hope you enjoyed this video. Kindly subscribe to the channel for more delicious recipes. Thank you. please welcome back if it's your first time on my channel you are welcome to Ant delicious kitchen kindly subscribe and become a part of this channel on here you will find diverse delicious recipes like chicken stir fry jollof rice indomie stir fry beans stew just to mention a few now the next recipe coming up is oxtail stew.
too. Yes, watch out guys. In this video, I will share with y'all how to make gari futo or gari jollof. This recipe will be in two parts. That's the making of the sauce and then the making of the gari futo. Grab a seat, relax as I walk you through the steps. Allow me to quickly go through the ingredients. So I have chopped onions, diced onions, tomatoes, gizzard, salt, chili and garlic seasoning, green bell pepper, oil, ginger, garlic, scotch bonnet pepper, carrots, green finger chilies, tomato paste, and shrimp cubes. Without wasting much time, let's get started. I will start off with making the marinade using onions, scotch bonnet peppers, garlic, ginger, shrimp cube for taste, or you can use salt and water. This will be blended into a smooth paste. Now, on the left hand side of my stove top, I have my chicken gizzard, which is in the pot. I will go ahead and pour the marinade over the chicken gizzard as this will be steamed and later fried. You always want to make sure that your meat is well seasoned, okay? So, I just added shrimp cube, which I like to cook with salt, chili and garlic seasoning. You want to steam the gizzard till it becomes tender, okay? And then on the right hand side of my stove top, I just added oil. You can use any oil of your choice to make your sauce. Let's go ahead and add the diced onions. For the best of flavors, you can mix your onions, which is both red and yellow, okay? This should be fried for about three minutes on medium heat. Once the onions are beautifully fried, I will go ahead and add my tomato paste. Now, when using tomato paste, you always want to make sure that it's well fried. If not, your sauce will taste better. So fry this for about five minutes, making sure to keep stirring to prevent it from burning. After five minutes, you can go ahead and add your blended tomatoes and mix till it's well combined. At this point, the gizzard is cooked to my preference. It's now time to fry them. Now, since the chicken gizzard is steamed, you don't want to fry it for too long or else it will become chewy. Fry this till it's golden brown, okay? As you can see, this is fried nicely. I will go ahead and set it aside for later use. Let's check on the sauce. It's looking gorgeous. I will add the broth. You don't want to get rid of this as it's packed with lots of flavor, okay? At this point, the stew is almost ready. I will go ahead and season it using chili and garlic seasoning which I like to cook with. 
carry powder, paprika powder, and stream cube. Once you've added your seasonings, you want to mix till everything is well combined. It's time to add the chicken gizzard. Now, once you've added your meats, allow the stew to cook for another five minutes. This way, the gizzard or meats will absorb all the flavors of the stew, okay? Let's make the garifoto. In my pot, I will scoop a bit of the stew. I just prepared. For this recipe, you can use any stew you have available. You don't necessarily have to make a new one. Also, you can use any veggies of your choice. You can use more or less. I will use carrots. green bell pepper green finger chilies and red onion for sweetness so you can use gari for other recipes such as eba gari sokins who remembers gari sokins kindly let me know in the comment section down below you can sprinkle your gari over your beans. So I just added a bit of water in my gari. This way the gari will soften and fluffen up as it's hard. So basically this recipe is made by mixing gari with sauce. You always want to make sure that your sauce is packed with lots of flavors as it always determines the flavor of the final dish. Look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? food is ready. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Stay blessed. Hi lovelies. Welcome to Anne's Delicious Kitchen where homemade dishes are made simple. On the menu, we have semolina. Semolina is a coarse, pale yellow flour made from durum wheat, and it's used to make pizza, bread, biscuits, just to mention a few. This recipe right here is easy to make and of course is delicious. All you need is water and, of course, your semolina. I will start off by pouring water in my saucepan. You can wait for the water to boil. I will go ahead and gradually stir in the semolina. You will need to keep stirring at this point, as you don't want any lumps in your semolina. Not only do I enjoy semolina this way, I also enjoy it as porridge. So while stirring, you will notice that the semolina will begin to thicken. All you need to do is to knead the semolina. 
this recipe should be ready in less than 10 minutes. If you haven't tried semolina before, kindly do so. It can be enjoyed with any soup of your choice. We will enjoy ours with red spicy pepper dip and fish on the side. I will now go ahead and wrap the semolina in the cling film and set it aside as it's ready. I will now go ahead and stir fry my mini fish using coconut oil and season it with chili and garlic seasoning. You can use any other seasoning of your choice as well as any other seafood. Food is ready and it's time to plate. I hope you enjoyed this video. Kindly subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and stay blessed. Hi lovelies, welcome to Anne's Delicious Kitchen. In this video, I will share with y'all how I make Ghanaian meat pie. Yes. Before I start, please be sure to subscribe to this channel and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss out on any of my videos. So as you can see, these are the ingredients I will use for this delicious recipe. I will list them in the description down below. So I will start off by combining all my dry ingredients in my bowl. I have already added three cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And then you want to mix till it's well combined. The next ingredients on the list is the unsalted butter. When making meat pies, you want to make sure you use enough butter or margarine. Mix till you achieve a crumbly dough. I will now go ahead and add half of evaporated milk. Mix this well. So while mixing, add a bit of water. And mix again. Keep in mind not to overwork the dough as it will become chewy instead of flaky, okay? As you can see, the mixture has come together. Form a ball and wrap it in plastic wrap. Keep it in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. Now, let's move on to making the filling. 
in my pot I just added one third a cup of coconut oil once it melts I will add one red chopped onion saute for about two to three minutes on medium heat after a few minutes I will add my two packs of the beef steak minced meat this should be cooked till it's brown So as you can see, the minced meat is cooked through. I will go ahead and flavor the filling. So here I have half a teaspoon of curry powder, one teaspoon of chili and garlic seasoning, one teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of chili powder, and one shrimp cube. I will then mix everything nicely. You can use any seasonings of your choice, okay? For veggies, I have carrots and chopped bell pepper. Mix everything together nicely now to thicken and bind the meat sauce together I just added a bit of cornstarch at this point allow the meat sauce to cook for about two to three minutes on medium heat in the meantime let's go ahead and assemble the ingredients on my clean surface, I just sprinkled a bit of flour. The dough has been taken out of the fridge and it's time to roll it out. So as you can see, the dough has been divided into two. This makes the roll-in process easier. You can also divide it into four if you want. So I will be using a rolling pin to roll out the dough and then we'll use the lid of my saucepan to create circles. So basically, I will repeat this process till all the dough is used. So, I will also be making mini meat pies using my dumpling mold. So as you can see, all the dough has been rolled out nicely. Now, let's move on to adding the filling in the middle of the dough. And use a brush to brush the edges of the dough with water to help seal the pies, okay? So, I will repeat this process for the remaining of the dough, okay? This time, I will seal the pies using a fork.
at this point, all the pies are sealed. And as you can see, they have been transferred onto a baking tray with parchment paper. Before baking the pies, you want to poke holes. This way, they will not open while baking, okay? After I have created the holes, I will brush the pies with egg wash. Once that's done, bake at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes or until browned. Just look at the outcome of the pies. Isn't it gorgeous? Enjoy your pies with molds. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you and stay blessed. Warm welcome to you all. I hope everyone is doing well and is taking good care of themselves. Welcome to my kitchen. Let's go ahead and make a perfect oven roasted potato recipe with a twist. So as you can see, these are the ingredients I will be using for this delicious recipe. I will name them as I cook, okay? So let's get started. Let's start with the stir fry. In my wok, I will drizzle two tablespoons of coconut oil. For this stir fry, I am using one pack of king prawns, which I grabbed from a supermarket that sells Asian and African food. Now, let's season the prawns. You can either season your prawns this way or season it before stir frying. So I just sprinkled a bit of Old Bay seasoning over the prawns and a bit of adobo seasoning. So this is two tablespoons of chili powder. I like my food spicy, so yes, some chili powder will do for me. Then I will mix till it's well combined. You want to cook this for about two minutes on medium heat. After a few minutes, your prawns should be cooked beautifully. Now let's go in with the red sliced onion. Cook this for about two minutes, still on medium heat. The next ingredient I have is two green finger chilies, which has been sliced. It's optional to use, okay? So cook this for two minutes as well. So basically, you can use any veggies of your choice for your stir fry, all right? So I just added my grated carrots. Now carrot is on the firm side and so you want to cook this for about 3 minutes on medium heat. Don't overcook the carrots or else it will become too soft. While the food is cooking, allow me to make my slurry. This will thicken the stir fry. So I just added 1 tablespoon of dark soy sauce, 1 tablespoon of light soy sauce, one tablespoon of honey for sweetness, of course. One tablespoon of chili sauce. Mix everything till it's well combined before adding your cornstarch or corn flour. So here I have my corn flour. Usually, cornstarch is used for making the slurry, but I'm working with corn flour, which has been mixed with water. Let's go ahead and add it in the wok and mix well. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. It's for free and you learn for free. For flavor, 
I will use one shrimp cube. You can use any other seasoning of your choice, okay? So as you can see, this stir fry is packed with lots of goodness, yes. So here I have my spinach. We are staying on the healthy side. You can use any other veggies of your choice and then you want to mix till it's well combined. Once the stir fry is cooked through, set it aside. Let's move to the main ingredients or star ingredients for this recipe. So these are the potatoes. You can use any potatoes of your choice. I will be using one pack of it for this recipe. So all you need to do is to make sure the potatoes are washed and they are clean. Then peel the skin using a knife or peeler. Once the potatoes are all peeled, cut them in bite-sized pieces or quarters. Then you want to soak them in water to remove some of the starch. Let's prep the water for boiling the potatoes. In my pot, I will pour just about enough water, salt to season the potatoes, and baking soda to help fluffen the potatoes. Once the water comes to a boil, add the bite-sized potatoes and boil for about 15 minutes on medium heat. You will know when they are cooked through when you're able to pierce easily with a fork. After 15 minutes or when the potatoes are soft, drain carefully and let them rest in your pot for a minute to allow the moisture to evaporate. Let's go ahead and pour the potatoes over my baking tray. They will be oven roasted till crispy on the outside and fluffy in the inside. Bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 to 25 minutes. While the potatoes are baking, I will go ahead and make my sauce. This recipe is on another level. In my pot, I just added half a cup of oil. Once it becomes hot, I will go in with my red sliced onion. Cook this for about three minutes on medium heat. This is the marinade I made the other day and kept it in the freezer. So I just added about enough of it in the pot and then you want to cook this for about three minutes. For this sauce, I will be working with just the tomato paste. Now when using tomato paste, you want to make sure it's cooked through, just to get rid of the bitter taste, okay? So I just added half of the tube of the tomato paste and you want to cook this for about five to seven minutes on medium heat. Make sure to stir occasionally to prevent it from burning. For flavor, I will use half a teaspoon of curry powder, two teaspoons of chili powder. 
Old Bay seasoning. Adobo seasoning. One chicken cube. Then I will stir till it's well combined. After 20 minutes, go ahead and turn the potatoes and bake it for about 15 minutes since the other side is already cooked. At this point, the potatoes are beautifully baked. I will go ahead and add them in the sauce and mix till it's well combined. Food is ready and it's time to plate. Give this recipe a try for lunch or dinner. Thank you and stay blessed. Hi lovelies, welcome to Ang's Delicious Kitchen. On the menu, we have jollof rice. This jollof rice is made with palm oil. For those who don't know, jollof rice is made in two parts. That's the making of the stew and the rice. Before I start cooking, allow me to show you the ingredients for this recipe. You can find the measurements of these ingredients in the description. Let's start cooking. When I make jollof rice, I like to use meat. So this is diced beef. You can use any protein of your choice. So I just added my blended mix, which will give flavor to the beef and also added one chicken cube. You want to steam the meat for about 20 minutes on medium heat. It's time to make the stew. So as I said earlier on, this recipe will be made with palm oil. So in my pot, I just added half a cup of Zomi palm oil. And then I will go in with two red diced onions. Fry the onions for three minutes on medium low heat. After three minutes or a few minutes, go in with your tomato paste. So I just added half a tube of the tomato paste. This should be fried for at least five minutes in order to get rid of the bitter taste. I will now go in with the blended mix, which consists of onions, scallions, scotch bonnet peppers, green finger chili, ginger, garlic, and pimento seeds. Fry this for about three minutes, still on medium heat, allowing infusion to take place. Here I have two green chopped finger chilies, which is optional to use. Fry this for about two minutes. 
while infusion is taking place in the pot allow me to quickly blend my ingredients so here i have one chopped tomato and one chopped carrot blend into a smooth consistency and add it in the pot like i am doing make sure to mix well and allow it to slow cook till the sauce thickens for about 20 minutes while the sauce is slow cooking i will go ahead and check on the meat at this point the meat should be tender this will be fried till golden brown So as you can see, at this point, the sauce has thickened. I will go ahead and add, yes, coconut milk, which will add a nutty and sweet flavor to the recipe. Make sure to stir everything nicely before adding your rice, okay? The diced beef has been fried beautifully look at how juicy look at how delicious it looks i will set it aside for later use the sauce is cooked to my preference and so i will go ahead and quickly wash the rice in order to get rid of some of the starch i am using four cups of fragrant rice let's add the rice in the sauce you want to make sure each grain of the rice is soaked in the sauce therefore you need to make sure it's mixed well for flavor i will go ahead and add two bay leaves which will give the recipe an almost minty flavor one chicken and one shrimp cube half a teaspoon of curry powder half a tablespoon of chili and garlic seasoning i like my food spicy so some chili powder and adobo seasoning after adding my seasonings i will mix everything well before adding water at this stage don't add too much water or the rice will become soggy after the rice has been cooking for about 10 minutes you can go ahead and add more water that's if the rice is dry and crunchy i have to add a bit more of the palm oil and then i will mix till it's well combined There goes my diced beef into the pot. So you can use any protein of your choice for your jollof rice. Although I added seasonings earlier on, I still had to add one shrimp cube. So it's always best to add your seasonings in bits so the food isn't over seasoned. Just look at the color of the rice. Isn't it gorgeous? Although it's not cooked through yet. If you're still watching, kindly subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. After 15 minutes of cooking the rice, reduce the heat to low and trap the steam by covering your pots. I will first use a baking paper and then the lid of the pot to cover the pot. Cook for another 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and check on the rice. Just look at the outcome. Nice and fluffy. Isn't it gorgeous? Food is ready and it's time to plate.
I hope you enjoyed this video. Kindly share it with friends and family. Thanks for watching and stay blessed. lovelies welcome or welcome back to Anne's delicious kitchen I hope everyone is doing well and taking good care of themselves have you ever tried fried ripe plantains with spicy red pepper dip by the way when a Ghanaian says pepper they are referring to chilies and not bell peppers I used to enjoy this recipe back in the day However, I decided to recreate this delicious recipe. Before I start, grab a seat, relax, and let me walk you through the steps. I will start off by peeling the skin of the ripe plantain. Once that's done, I will go ahead and cut the plantains into my desired size then transfer it into my bowl. This process should be repeated till all the plantains are peeled and cut into your desired size. Once all the plantains are done, I will transfer the rest in my bowl. Personally, I like to soak my plantains in salted water. The water should be cold. Once that's done, I will set it aside and allow the salt to soak into the plantains. Let's prep the ingredients for the spicy red dip. I will start off by roasting my tomatoes and green bell pepper in my oven. It's optional to use green bell pepper. This should be for about 8 to 10 minutes. Whilst these are in the oven, I will go ahead and add my onion, ginger, and water. Then blend these ingredients. Once that's done, I will set it aside for later use. So as you can see, at this point, my green bell pepper and tomatoes are done roasting. I will add it in my blender as well as my scotch bonnet pepper and blend. Don't blend till it's smooth. So this is the consistency you are looking for. Let's set it aside. It's now time to start cooking my spicy red dip. Now, this dip is kinda like your sauce. To my skillet, I have added my coconut oil. Once it's melted, I will add my blended mix, which is the onion and ginger, as well as my tomato mixture. Your skillet, pot or saucepan should be on medium heat. You want to fry your mixture until the oil has separated from the mixture, okay? If you're still watching at this point, kindly subscribe to this channel. It's free of charge and you will learn how to make your recipes free of charge. To add a unique flavor to this dip, I will add shrimp powder. This changes the taste of this dip. And then allow it to cook on low heat. Now, let's make the prawns stir fry. To my skillet, I have added coconut oil. 
To that, I will add the king prawns. This should be stir fried for about 2 to 3 minutes on medium high heat. These are the seasonings I like to cook with. So, I have shrimp cube, chili and garlic seasoning, seafood seasoning because I use prawns, and then salt to taste. Then you want to mix well. Let's add the sliced red onion. Stir fry this for about two minutes. And let's add the chopped green bell pepper. Look at how gorgeous this stir fry looks. And it also looks tasty. Back to the dip. So as you can see, the red pepper dip is frying beautifully. I will go ahead and season it with shrimp cube, chili and garlic seasoning, chili powder for extra heat. Yes, I did use cut bonnet pepper, however, I like my recipes spicy or extra spicy. So you want to cook your red pepper dip for about 20 minutes. At this point, this recipe is ready and it's time to plate. I will list the ingredients and its measurements in the description down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Kindly give this recipe a try. Subscribe to the channel and share the video. Thank you and stay blessed.